welcome to Z Connect, your favorite weekend show with me Priya and Ramadan Kareem to all our wonderful viewers. It's that time of the week where I join you to give you a quick rewind of everything important that has happened in your city which is worth your attention. From art, music, literature to celebs and environment, we have it all covered for you. So let's begin. Dubai has become a permanent art fixture on Dubai's thriving art calendar. This year, the event hosted more than 4,000 artworks from 300 plus galleries and solo artists hailing from almost 50 countries. It was bigger, better and the most diverse edition of World Art Dubai so far. Check it out. My name is Isabel. I'm a Mauritian artist from Mauritius. I'm based in Dubai. My work is mostly about mo mosaic and I do a lot of abstract work. For me, mosaic is all about the textures, the feeling of it. The materials are, are really important because my work is not just about the visual, it's about the feeling. You need to touch a mosaic, you need to feel it. Um, and working with nature, I want to recreate the textures that there are in nature. Um, this is really what my work is about. Um, I use a lot of glass. I'm really fascinated with mirrors because they have a, a beautiful reflective quality. So it invites you into the artwork. So a lot of the work reflects whatever is around. So the viewer are invited inside the artwork. The theme really is about um, exploring nature, exploring the, the beautiful forms in nature. And um, what's interesting about my work is it's abstract, so you don't know what you're looking at. And however you interpret my work, it, it's depending on your knowledge. So you will see whatever you want to see in it, not just what I intend for you to see, um, which is the beauty of abstract. Hello, my name is Ahlam Al Shuduki. I'm a Saudi contemporary artist uh, uh, contributing in World Art Dubai. Uh, I'm here to uh, show my uh, work of art, which focus on uh, uh, my social um, surrounding. Uh, I present uh, the social uh, uh, movement and changes that happening around me, and uh, that's the source of inspiration society and uh, inclusiveness is an important component. Uh, gender relation is also important. Uh, progress in my community is part of my, uh, of my artwork in this collection. Uh, I aspire to be international. I aspire to represent uh, the art world in an intelligent way and I aspire to be honest and truthful and uh, I hope uh, I connect with my community and the world. My name is Taz Rock. I am a graffiti artist from Los Angeles, USA, America. I'm here in Dubai for the last five months. This is probably my fifth time back here. Um, over here we're at the um, World Art Dubai. This is my character that I'm doing. This has to do with the future and social media um, or social social media, social media positivity. It's a positive robot woman. Um, this, this is a character I design. Um, I normally do photorealistic but I also do characterized um, characterized people and uh, traditional graffiti. So my name is Elaine Avalos, uh, artist name Art X L A, Art by L A. Um, yeah, so I'm also a graffiti artist. This is my first time in Dubai, my first time here at this event. It's been super awesome. Like I'm, I love the setup here and the vibe here. It's very professional, very clean, very nice wall for us to uh, paint and 
I really love like the different activities that they have going on here with the fashion graffiti and the makeup and stuff. So it's a good mix of everything urban. Like it's truly speaking to, you know, the venue and the sector in itself. And yeah, super excited to be here. Thank okay, you. thank you. Did you ever think that local, regional and international musicians could entertain you with live music while you commute to work in Dubai Metro? I will share more details about this after this short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Brand Dubai along with RTA rolled out the second edition of the Dubai Metro Music Festival with an aim to encourage the arts and music culture in the city along with also enriching the creative environment in the Emirate by making global performing arts more accessible to the community. Let's see it together. Hi, my name is Inas Halal. I'm one of the participants uh, with uh, Dubai Metro Music Festival. I play percussion instruments. I'm originally from Syria, but I choose my percussion to be uh, international ones. They are very specific, actually. And uh, the most famous one uh, is the Arabic Darbuka. Uh, I think uh, music is a beautiful international language. And what proves that is that uh, one of the gigs I played with, with an artist that I don't know, and uh, he, he did some beatboxing and it was amazing. So the music can connect all of us and it's amazing experience. Uh, thank you so much Dubai Metro Music Festival for this beautiful opportunity. Hopefully we will see you soon next year. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Alexander Vishkanov. I am from Ukraine, I'm a violinist and I'm happy to be here today because Dubai Metro Music Festival is a good opportunity for all musicians and uh, I'm happy to be a participant in this place because more people see us, more people uh, came and relaxing with us and like chilling, yes, and uh, it's really good because uh, they tired all day, they working and now here uh, we can give him positive energy and that's why we did it, uh, that's why we do it and uh, thank you for government for this opportunity. Flute, 
son of a flute in English. Um, you know, I transform wastes or broken objects into musical instruments. Um, the principle is, um, I, you know, I take it. If it's broken, I repair it and I add a musical function. You know, and that's that's what I do. For example, I love my grandmother's watering can. Uh, that's my favorite instrument because it sounds like a clarinet or a saxophone and I really love it. Uh, and this is my first time in the Metro Dubai Festival. I really love it because I met a lot of people. Hi, my name is Sandhu. I play Indian tabla for the prestigious Dubai Metro Music Festival. This is first time I'm playing Indian classical tabla. I'm grateful for the government of Dubai and Arte Dubai for providing me such a wonderful opportunity to represent Indian classical tabla to, uh, to the passengers, to the audience, to the, the wonderful people in the metro stations. In my viewpoint, Dubai is a wonderful place uh, for the artists. The government and the media and other cultural organizations are supporting the artists and art related people a lot. And uh, thank you so much. See you next year. We are taking you to the launch event of the book titled A Nation to Protect Leading India Through the Covid Crisis by Priyam Gandhi Modi. The book was unveiled by His Excellency Sanjay Sudhir, Indian Ambassador to the UAE in the presence of noted dignitaries and VIPs at the India Pavilion at the Expo. <laughs> Whatever assistance they can provide, they wanted to provide. And why did it happen? And it just happened because of India's overall goodwill in the world. Because of our, as I said, you know, the India's large heartedness, vaccine maitri, Vasudev Kotumakam, that when we could help, we reached out and helped 100 countries. When their, it came, their turn came to help, they also overwhelmingly helped us. In this help, it was not only countries, but also our NRI community. Uh, in this country in particular. A Nation to Protect, I think is a wonderful book written by Priyam Gandhi Modi on a big nation with big challenges and nation which has protected itself under the wise leadership of uh, our Honorable Prime Minister. I think we have set an example in the world on how to deal with such pandemics, such uh, unprecedented crises in a way which is which involves everybody, which uh, involves the whole of government, which involves the people, which involves friendship with other countries, which involves global support. Otherwise, there's no other way to deal with the pandemic and we have been able to deal with it in a very successful way. So when a variant, when a new mutation takes place, when a variant spreads, we, we are not able to assess the damage it does in the society until it has already started spreading. You know, all countries were in the same boat. But India's story is particularly intriguing because 
nobody really expected us to survive and not only have we survived but we're sort of you know one of the leaders in the fight against the pandemic now when the pandemic hit the world india was pegged to be um, the major hotspot after it had spread to the united states to parts of europe italy the uae even and um, we really didn't have the tools that any country needs to fight a pandemic and um, we've inherited decades of uh, weak health infrastructure even so everybody thought including global leaders opinion makers everybody thought that india was going to fail in its pandemic response and because and and there are so many people are going to die that bodies are going to pile up on the streets and because of india's failure in containing the pandemic the global response would suffer as opposed to that today not only have we turned the crisis into an opportunity for growth but we're helping many many other countries in their fights against the pandemic for instance we've committed to 5 billion vaccine doses by the end of this year so that's a big leap from what people said we were going to be and where we are today so that that story needed to come out and that's why i wrote the book right so when i started out i knew that i wanted to um write it from a top down approach by top down i mean i wanted to know what the prime minister thought i wanted to know who he was advised by what the team was advising him and how that shaped um policy and how that policy sort of trickled uh, down to the last man on the ground so that's the so so to do that research i spoke to all of these people including including the prime minister it it was very clear that he was leading the country he was leading the country from the front he didn't want to indulge in any sort of internal politics uh, that was going on because his focus was to take the country out of the pandemic first to secure the people first and then he'll deal with the politics of it later so one of the one of the um stark features is that we've not flip flopped um our leaders have not flip flopped on any decisions we've taken science um scientific evidence based decisions and we've stuck to them um we've stuck to those decisions until we've achieved a wide um you know wide reach so for instance if you take vaccination um like i've said in the speech before over 90 97% of our adults are fully vac vaccinated when some other nations began to give give out their third and fourth um booster shots even when they had only achieved about 50% coverage or 60% coverage so we focused on widespread policies versus quickly changing them up Lots more coming on the show on the other side. See you after a short break. Welcome back. Dubai Autism Center announced its 16th annual autism awareness campaign to be launched on April 2nd on the occasion of World Autism Awareness Day. The month-long campaign aims to increase public understanding of autism and also to promote community acceptance of children with the condition. Let's meet the team to know more. how are you i'm fine thank you how are you doing very well and uh, well you have been associated with dubai autism center for a long time now you have a son uh, who's 11 years yes. and who's been here yes. uh, studying here and doing all the activities that are happening here so tell me about your experience with dubai autism center we have joined dubai autism center in 2018 and since then 
our life has changed not only my son but as a family we have evolved and changed overall so as a parent it is very important that somebody should guide me at a time where i need a professional help and i really get it over here for everything to all the new parents just a small message we all go through a lot of stages of denial grief anxiety depression and then comes acceptance and that comes only with the support system please don't fall back look for the people look for the people same people around the community talk to them get some help and look for the institutions who can really really help you because early intervention is the key this is coming from a mother who has lost few beginning years of the early intervention i regret that but when i'm here i really think that i'm on the right track so please look forward to that and take care of yourself if you're healthy if you're happy then only your child will be happy hi sudakshana how are you i'm fine thank you priya okay let's talk about your association with dubai autism center and about uh, rahi who's 12 years old right yeah okay initially it was really a very tough time for us to accept rahi being autistic uh cannot lead a normal life like you and me uh, but then uh, thanks to my husband and my nanny though i am the biological mother she is the one who is actually taking care of rahi so they have given me lot of support and strength to look forward hmm. when the dubai autism center this facility was built in rashidia in i believe in 2017 so that time we were very fortunate to get rahi uh, you know the school and what are the major major changes you have seen in rahi ever since you have been associated with the biotism center she started uh, communicating with us by gestures by a uh, little bit of communication through verbally verbally she was talking i can't express like you know it's something it comes from our heart that yeah. being a parent uh, being a parent to a special needs kid i always will tell the inform the new parents be positive look forward think about your child think about the the whole thing around her uh, i mean something you need to look forward positive something that you have to do to make more positive and yes. nicer for your child and for yourself because it is not the end of the world Correct. there are ways yeah. you can work around it thank and still be yes. happy yes priya thank you so much sudakshana it's been a pleasure talking to you thank you ivan thank you for joining us today thank you so much for having us Right tell me more about this new campaign that Dubai's Autism Center has started this year. Uh this is our 16th uh awareness campaign uh that we're having it in a unique way this year because we're focusing more on the society the integrated approach that we're having as well as the value of the early detection. As part of this contribution and implementation of the directives of His Highness uh, Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Crown Prince of Dubai, uh, Dubai Autism Center announced the launch of the free di diagnostic, uh, okay. yeah, a comprehensive assessment for 100 Emirati children who are suspected to have autism. In addition, of course, to that, since last year we launched the free the free consultation. Free consultation is for everyone. We continue to do it as well for this year. That is wonderful. I think these initiatives are great that are happening by the mm -hmm. Autism Center year after year. Thank you so much for talking to us, Simon. Thank you so much. Hello, Priyanka. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Priya. Nice to meet you again. <laughs> So why don't you elaborate on the new campaign this year and also tell me what are these early signs of autism that parents need to look out for? Absolutely. Considering the first critical age of 0 to 5 years, which is the brain's uh, dynamic period where a brain is more flexible and the growth of the development uh, takes place massively. So early detection which will lead to the early diagnosis and thereby we can start the early intervention as soon as possible and it is highly important for the parents to be guided and supported at the maximum by the multidisciplinary team and including the admin support also which is required intensive training is important and not only that the journey is any time like they have to be hopeful there something should be there as a positive uh, sense that okay i am this going will be to okay. yes i am going to overcome as a child as a parent as a society or as a professional we also play a vital role in the whole journey yeah 
as you have asked me what are the main important part of you uh, know early sign initially it starts even from the beginning like yeah. a social smile when child look at you or smiles at you when you are smiling whether the child is smiling back to you whether there is appropriate eye contact from the child's end or probably something called like joint attention like whether when you are playing with the child whether the child is participating some ways uh, and responding the gest gesture mm. yes absolutely to you so those are the key thing at the earliest any neurotypical children will be looking into or a parent should be looking into this is a very crucial part and if you as a parent or as a mom if you feel like some area not responding to the name call or probably not looking at the you know eye contact is not appropriate or sitting tolerance is very inappropriate or very uh, short then definitely you should uh, go to your pediatrician at the earliest hmm. not delay anymore so that we don't miss out any red flag yes. from you know the, those perspectives yes thank you so much Priyanka. so much this is great on behalf of the boy autism center we are very very thankful to have z uh, tv each year during the campaign we are really thankful and wish you all the best thank you, thank you. as greta thunberg says all we have to do is wake up and change because earth is the only home we have so today's parting note is be responsible and do your bit to preserve and protect our planet I will see you next week, same time, same place. Until then, don't forget to scroll through our stories on our social media handles. Stay connected, take care, I'll see you soon.